All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Carden Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And I told you, I told you, I told the audience, I told the haters, and it's finally come out with video proof. We've seen the tapes that the media, specifically one CNN, as we say in Spanish, is guilty of media bias against one Andrew Yang. And uh, we can't even say the name of the people that caught him because, uh, you know, the algorithms will chase after that and, and, and we'll get we'll get some kind of strike or some kind of limited uh, monetization or whatever. But Cody's going to give you the details of who said what and who got caught by whom saying what. Yeah. Well, actually, I will be explicitly not telling you exactly who said it. No. But- <laughs> Uh, anyway, but there is, I mean, well, I guess I'll mention the name. There's a, a man, James O'Keefe. He, he has a company, uh, Project Veritas. Uh, they've been doing a report, and they've just been releasing um, over the last few days some tapes within CNN. Now, remember, just take this with a grain of salt, but these are off-the-record recordings with employees. However, we're going to go through a couple of them because, and first of all, I don't think necessarily if I were to, te- if I were to say that uh, there is some talk that CNN and other networks might not be treating Andrew Yang fairly and not taking him seriously. Uh, you know, I mean, if I don't know why I would think that. There's only, you know, tons of evidence, and people like our friend Scott Xanthans have been talking about this for a while. So what does that mean? Why does that matter? I'm going to read over, I guess these are a few quotes that were released um, from CNN employees, uh, off the record uh, employees taken. Now this one, this first one I want to get to, um, I guess... Now, I don't want to mention the names. I'll have the link if you want to go pull the thing up, but I I know YouTube gets touchy because these are uh, undercover videos. Yes. Anyway, though. And they'll legit. We'll get copyright strikes. They'll take away monetization. No, I mean, just don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to yeah. mess around with the legality stuff. But anyway, here we go. The One of the executives at the CNN uh, asked another one of their high-ranking political officials, as is David, are we, ta- oh, are we taking Andrew Yang seriously enough? Um, and the guy, one of the hiring people says, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I don't know why we wouldn't take, um, you know, mostly his candidates seriously. We should definitely be looking at why Andrew Yang is resonating. Do I think he's a likely nominee? No, I don't. Which, um, well, you sure as heck aren't going to be when you go into the argument as a unbiased journalist. It's a pretty, it's a pretty bad answer to a yes or no question. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know. Why wouldn't we? Hey, hey, do you think that it's yes or no, man? Are we taking him seriously enough? Well, you know, I mean, and then actually he also mentions in the the recording, he goes on and says, well, you know, he's, he's raised all this money and he's sixth in polling. Do you think that young man who was wearing the hoodie is guilty of this heinous crime? Well, you know, I wouldn't see why, you know, most of those young men wearing hoodies are, you know, all guilty of those uh, famous... Uh, maybe we should see why people are protesting a little bit, but, you know, uh, I, this is the epitome of prejudice. The epitome of the worst that can come from those who are supposed to be unbiased. It, it, it's like... Please, well, like, they're not I, news. On. That's it, a little, media is not news. That's a bit overboard. This first one, like I said, it was just kind of a, a, what's the word? A phony, a, a, it was a clown answer to a question of, are we taking him seriously enough? This is what I think was really interesting. So uh, this was the inside reporter. He's speaking to a, a media employee at CNN. And he says, so who is CNN unfair or against right now in the debate? Is unfair a word, by the way? Or is that just kind of off the cuff? Thing? Unfairer. Because sometimes you see a word like that and you yeah. laugh like, ha, that's not a real word. And it's like, actually, it is. We just don't use it anymore. I, I don't yeah. know. If, well, it's by the way, we're going to set this straight. That aside. That we're going to set this straight. Unfairer it's aside. actually funner. And we talked about this in my honor CPEG class okay, in high school. Before you have trap, it I is wanna, funner. Before we get so if it's unfairer, it can also be funner. Cool. Got it. Love <laughs> it. Push it and ask. Anyway. Um, so, again, like I said, so the, uh, the insider here. And, again, I'll post the link. I'm just keeping it on the video a little bit because the... They don't like the names and doxing. Anyways, the link will be in the description. It's a published article. It's out in the public. Anyway, so he asks them, who is CNN unfair against? And he actually says, this media employee, um, I think probably Yang and Klobuchar, one of the lesser ones, oh, just because you know? they're going to talk about Biden, more Warren, and Sanders. They're not going to mention others. I thought it was interesting, the fact that he just dropped. Now, if this was it, and we had no reason to believe there was any weird shenanigans going on, honestly, I would say, eh, if this is all they got, like, so what? Who cares, right? 
However, and again, I'm going to go through the same thing. However, and notwithstanding. Well, I mean, like. Dot, dot, dot. This was a pretty weird one. MSNBC replied saying, oh, we, the reason why it's off on ours is for a reason. I don't believe CNN replied that way. Anyway, this graphic came out and released by CNN. And Andrew Yang says, maybe next time we should raise $20 million. Because Andrew Yang raised $10 million and he should be working. Cory Booker was, but he wasn't included, and this was a big issue, and Andrew, Andrew Yang himself tweeted about it multiple times, saying, why is this happening? This doesn't make any sense. Another article, I mean, it's, Scott Sanders has been charting it. This is my favorite example of this, my favorite example of CNN publishing some weird graphic. It doesn't make any sense. It, I, I literally have never seen anything like this before. When There actually is people that take up the five blank slots on a graph, or the four blank slots, and they just leave them blank anyway. Just, whatever. Guess we don't need to show anyone. And after months of people saying, what is CNN doing? Why are they doing weird things like putting Beto O'Rourke here instead of Andrew Yang with three times the Because they like even. Beto. You don't get it. This Nor'easterner well, media Democrat. I lived in Manhattan that, for two but years. That, but that's not what we're seeing, remember. That's not, that's not what, that's, what we're now seeing is employees actually coming out and saying, or an employee off the record, saying, though, that... And you'll notice something about Yang and Klobuchar, definitely the most moderate of any of these candidates, saying, yeah, the moderates, Yang and Klobuchar, we we unfair, we unfair 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 r- 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 really cover them. And now we're actually seeing it's something that for months people following this stuff have been just saying, it's really weird to CNN just like keeps I mean, I could probably run over, oh my god, I could just keep keep throwing these up. I mean, Scott Sanson been charting it for a while. And at a certain point, it is kind of like, why is it always Andrew Yang? Why is it always Andrew Yang that's being left off the stuff? Well, now. We have an employee, again, off the record, but an employee saying, oh, yeah, Klobuchar and Yang, those are the two. We have an em- we have one of their high-ranking employees being asked point blank by one of the executives, do we cover him fairly? And getting kind of a phony answer. Uh, well, you know, I think, sort of, why wouldn't we? I guess we could. Like, what does that even mean, man? And then kind of couching it with, well, I don't think he's a viable candidate anyway. Um, and that brings us to tonight's debate. Now, before hosted get, by who? By, by the way, b- hosted by the company that just got roasted. Hosted by the roasted. Yes. Yeah, all CNN, right. CNN. For media bitus. Yeah. Well, here's the last thing I want to cover okay. before, we get, before we get back to you. Okay. Like I, said, I want to hear what you want to say about this, but I want to show you one more thing. Now, and I'll, 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 I'll scroll up so you guys can see it as CNN. But this is a CNN. The point with a uh, Chris Kaliza. Kaliza. I'm from mispronouncing it. Anyways, um, ranking the 2020 Democrats. Right now. If you had to guess, before you look, Cardin, Andrew okay. Yang, where do they have him ranked? Amy uh, Klobuchar, in, where in what kind ranked? of rankings? Is this just financial rankings? 2020 Dems, like power rankings. Oh, these these arbitrary power rankings. Power rankings, That yeah. basically just means, oh, how many rankings. people do we, th- how much clout? They always use the word clout. Well, not power rankings is like, power rankings, is, it's kind of a sports thing, and it's the idea is like, Okay, maybe this team has one less win than that team, but like, just look who's the actually okay, the fine. best. Okay, fine. So in power like, rankings, not who's the top of the polls, I, I, who's I raising you, money, but who's actually the best. I, I bet you because they're a bunch of sellouts, and they already are looking for the stronger relationship with who they think is going to be president. I bet you that either out of respect for the poll numbers. They're putting Biden on top, or they've probably put Elizabeth Warren on top, but there's no way they put Bernie Sanders on top. And of Yang the, is? Of those really top quickly, three. 30 seconds, Yang is? He would have to be fourth by no other reason. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see how close you are. Let's see how right you are. Yeah. And Yang is eighth. Eighth Over who? Rankings. Over who? Tom Steyer? I mean, okay, that makes sense. He's behind. By the way, Tom Steyer, you notice how they put that plus one next to him? You know what well, I'm he's saying? in 10th place, I, so he was in 11th last week. Yeah, I bet you that plus one is because he paid somebody at CNN, because what are power rankings? Exactly. There's yeah. no way he's even close to top 10 by any other measurable quantifier that science and the middle oh. class respect. <laughs> you want to read what they said about him? I love this. What'd Money can get you a place at the political table. Steyer has <laughs> spent many millions on television advertisements in the early states. That's gotten him enough support to make the October debate and has him on the cusp of making uh. November. But here's what's crazy. How much of money? How much money did CNN get? I wonder. <laughs> exactly. Mm. I don't know if he. Uh, yeah, he probably did pay the network. But get this. This is what's really funny to me. First of all, remember the employee off the record. Which two candidates are getting kind of like stiffed in our media coverage for the debates? Andrew Yang and Amy Klobuchar. Oh, eight and nine. Which actually nine is kind of a good performance for Amy. Still, they're the two candidates at the bottom. And then read Andrew Yang. This is the eighth ranked guy in the power rankings according to CNN. Um, 
the second businessman on our list, just announced that he raised $10 million during the third quarter. It's likely going to be more than the vast majority of Democrats running. Yang's up to 3% of the national polls on average, which puts him well ahead of most Democrats. He looks likely to make the November debate. And his unconventional campaign has found a niche audience. Well, it's, it feels like the person who wrote that isn't the person who did the rankings. That doesn't feel like someone who'd be ranked near the bottom. Why is he behind Beto O'Rourke and Cory Booker? Why? I don't know. Exactly I, I'm pretty Watch, sure he raised more graphic. money than both Cody. of them. He literally raised more money than both of them. He's pulling ahead of them. Why is he behind Cody. them? You know how sometimes you have to translate for me like Gen Z speak and gamer speak, you know, and stuff like that? I'm going to translate to you. I'm going to open up the, 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 the mind of the SJW intern. Or the SJW uh, writer that finding, made these power rankings. But we're finding now that it's not coming from the bottom up; it's the top down. That, no, no, I don't, you don't think there's SJWs in the top ten of CNN? Have you ever looked at their no, anchors? But that's the Don point. Lemon, Brian no, Stelter. But that's the point. Yeah, it's it's not it's not SJW. So look, I'll tell you employees, what's going through Brian Stelter's down. mind and Don Lemon's mind. Hold on, before you get there, I just want to be fair to these guys. Specifically, this is a Chris Kaliza. Okay, look up Chris Kaliza. There's no way he's ever donated to a Republican or registered in a Republican These primary. Are Democratic power rankings, man. What does that have to oh, do with okay. this? Okay, oh, no, I'm just going to tell you. This is what's going through his mind. Well, we are a news organization, so we can't show Joe Biden as anything other than first, which he actually is technically, according to the aggregate of polls, still. So reluctantly, but because he's Obama's guy, we'll put him as first. But heck no. Even though mathematically Bernie Sanders is still technically ahead of Elizabeth Warren, am I going to show the old socialist over the new socialist? So Elizabeth Warren is second in power rankings, but we got to show love to Bernie because he brought us Medicare for all. Fourth, identity politics take over. If you don't show Pete Buttigieg as, as fourth in these power rankings, by the way, you'll notice that they don't actually disclose with what rubric they show these power rankings. So now identity politics has got to kick in in order of importance. First, the LGBT candidate. Second, the female of cover. Okay, but color. to tonight's debate. To tonight's debate. Uh, I know, tonight's the debate. That's fine. No, but and I mean, then finally, let's... now we can go into what else matters. And now it's ideology. And Beto O'Rourke, he's all up in the power rankings. Why? Because he's promised to strip America of all AR-15s and all guns and outlaw all churches that have uh, the interpret uh, a, a biblical traditional marriage these are all things that have come out of Beto O'Rourke's mouth in the past 10 days okay but I, I don't care that's, that's what these power rankings are okay, they're not power that's rankings that's not why I wanted to show they're, you this they're the, progressive the, the, rankings that's, that's so far off the deep point I was trying to show all I'm okay. trying to highlight is we've been saying for a while is CNN on the up with how they cover Yang doesn't feel like it like I said, reading the blurb and why they had an eighth didn't make any sense sounds like a case for why you should be perhaps fifth or sixth and then we have CNN off the record employees basically saying, yeah, Klobuchar and Yang, we don't cover them fairly because our bosses don't want us to, essentially. And that brings us to something we already, we, today we already talked. We already moaned about it. A lot of media moaning today. We already had a yeah. moan about it. But we were just talking earlier about, uh, I believe it was New York Times, for whatever reason, had a very interesting graphic showing the candidates. And it showed the, I think I should pull it up right here. It shows the candidates at various different heights for whatever reason. I don't exactly know why. They just kind of did it that way. And we're moving forward and forward and forward. And suddenly, we have to remember something. Yeah, actually, they have it right here at the top. Uh huh. Who is hosting the debate tonight? <laughs> CNN in conjunction with the New York Times. Now, oh. we don't have necessarily the same recordings that say maybe the New York Times isn't on the up when it comes to how they cover Yang. But we have... Implications, suggestions from behind the scenes that the way CNN covers Yang isn't necessarily on the up and it's a little bit of like, eh, we don't take him serious. We know we probably should be. Maybe we'll cover his rise, but eh, what the, we don't want to talk about him that much. Seem to be the, and again, I'll have the link. You guys can hear exactly what he said word for word. So, you know, you can see we're not just making this up. And then we have New York Times. Again, I'm trying to find the graphic just showing the candidates at weird varying heights. And then remember the other thing about this debate tonight. Something else about this debate. Look, but before you X out of that, though, well, look at that title. Our guide on how to watch. Like, I mean, that, any idea that they're well, not the thought police, man. <laughs> this no, is how you must watch. I got I to gotta, I gotta stop you there. <laughs> okay. That is literally, that, that article is written for every MotoGP event, every big football game, every playoff baseball game, every political event, every debate. Every royal wedding, that exact article is written. So I'm not gonna, no. I'm not gonna go hammer on that. That is literally how to watch the royal wedding. Trust me, it's out there. Here we go. 
the other weird thing about tonight's debate. So again, we have CNN and New York Times who both have been doing some screwy stuff. More CNN with Yang. Now we have employees kind of saying, yeah, we got to screw around with the guy. You'll notice something weird. Now, the first three debates have been borderline unwatchable. I think most of us would agree. Right, Card? I mean, hard to watch. Tonight's debate's going to have 12 candidates on stage. The most uh, of any debate so far in this process. It's They haven't had a 12-candidate debate at all this process for the Democrats. And the first three have been absolute shams. They're not debates. It's literally just people going off. And, oh, I, I'm going to pull up even, even better. Even better. Remember when they were talking about who they actually care about for these, uh, who, who CNN really cares about? And yeah. they go on later on in those, in those leaks. And again, the link will be there for you guys so you can see it. And they said, um, basically, yeah, we only care about the top candidates. We, we only want the top candidates cover, which, by the way, makes sense, makes them more money. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and pretend they, they aren't incentivized. Here is the here is the uh, the podium lineup for tonight. Love this. Who do you think CNN wants to talk the most in this debate? Who do you think CNN is most interested? I guarantee they've in, chosen their godhead, oh, so the York godhead Times. will be there. Oh, here it is. There's a graphic. And look, exactly. And, and, okay. And, and look. Oh, and their godhead is there. Exactly. Biden, Warren, Sanders. Well, it's the Biden Warren debate featuring other twenty twenty Democratic oh, candidates. Now this is look. This is basically if you just go like this and bounce them backwards and forwards, it looks like that's the power rankings. Because look, you had Biden, then Warren, then uh, Bernie, probably then how Buttigieg, they did it. It's not sure how they did it. Then yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, coordinated with their power rankings. But uh, let's see. Where's our friend Andrew Yang? Oh, Yang, yep, right yep, there yep, next to still. O'Rourke. But still, like this optically. Looks like the Biden Warren debate featuring no, special guest table. special yeah. guest Democratic representatives as it's well. It's garbage. They're garbage. But again, in a like we were doing a lot with this Yang stuff and this media stuff, Yang media stuff. I meant to say, in an isolated incident in a vacuum. Okay, whatever. But when employees come out and say, "Eh, you know, I think we kind of screw around with Yang Klobuchar a bit," even then, it's like, oh, it's just an employee saying one thing. But then. It's Andrew Yang having to come out multiple times and say, "Hey CNN, can you please give me fair media coverage?" And when people keep saying, "Yeah, why is it, why is it like stuff like this? Why would they do weird things like create a graphic with slots for eight candidates and only include seven, just deliberately leaving off Yang? Why would they do this? Why would they do this? Why when they have to pick one candidate? Why is it always not Andrew Yang? Again, in a vacuum, oh X, Y, and Z. But it's starting to get to a point where it's like, look. And New York Times, again, they have their own set of issues, but CNN so hosts this debate why. tonight, and it's looking like CNN is progressively more and more here, as it goes I'll on, basically exactly saying, why. we are working to get the... But here's the question. Is it ratings or political goal? Is it just, I think I think Warren and Biden's my best rating, so that's what I want. Cody, I don't care. Here, here, here's why. Here's exactly why. Let's ask ourselves the same question. Why do our congressmen, why are they all ex-lawyers? Well, not all. You know, not all of them. But I mean, we're looking at like what a solid at least 75%, 80% now. A ruling class that has like a 90% sure? some 80% years. 80% are ex-lawyers? Oh, it's crazy. Look up the percentage of how many are ex-lawyers. Okay. Why? Because what happens now is, you know, you get born into a rich family. You end up going to get your, uh, you know, you end up going to Yale, not based off of merit. But because, you know, your parents are who they are. And then you go and you get your Juris Doctorate, not based off of merit, but just because your parents donated to the to the building, you know. And then you go intern for a clerk somewhere. You run for office. You know it's, what I'm it's saying? 43% of the Okay, 43%. Oh, hold on. 43% of our society are not... That's for, Okay, no. so 40% of House of Representatives, basically. Yeah. And how much? Now that's there are 123 Democrat lawyers in Congress that list lawyer as their profession. No, you got to look at like people who have gotten their Juris Doctorate that are also other things now. Like for example, okay, Andrew on, Yang self-identifies as an entrepreneur, okay, but, but he got his Juris Doctorate. Oh, I said okay, okay, but you, you see what I'm saying? Like sort of. But what, look but what's at the, the number point here? of the Juris point here? Doctorates, and and what does it matter? What does it mean? It, it matters because that's what become the pipeline. That's become the pipeline to Congress now. And now the pipeline into these big media outlets, I know this, I work in media, 70% of all positions, okay, that are not direct in company hires in all of these media conglomerates are done off of internships. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows the glory days of starting the mailroom are over, okay? You either get bought because you're a pre-existing media asset, okay, and you get acquired, as they call it, or else you're an intern 
And they get around all the Obamacare requirements, around all the other pay requirements. And they also just want to see if you're an idiot or not because you can fire an intern easily. You can't fire an employee easily. So 70% of all these hires are based off of internships. So what happens is they get interns from these prestigious schools. And by prestigious, they mean rich and corrupt. Okay. And, and, and the group think has taken over. Why? Because movements start as movements. Then they become businesses. Then they become rackets. OK, the media started out as a movement with the advent of television and radio throughout the 20s, 30s and 40s. We made awesome broadcast media uh, uh, progress so much so that by the 50s, it was the business. And from 1950 to Ronald Reagan signing the Fairness Doctrine uh, out away in the 80s, it was a business. But post 90s, it's just become a racket. And I hope we don't have to go all the way until 2030 before we recognize that our media is a filthy racket. That's it. That's why we need smaller channels. That's why we need the Project Unspeakable. That's why we need small channels like this one. That's why we need, like, we had a fan call in the other day and leaving a voicemail saying that he'd started his own channel uh, inspired by us. We need more of those channels because you can't trust CNN. You plain old can't. So, so, within you, so you would then say that CNN and New York Times hosting the debate tonight you really can't trust what they say tonight. Is that what you, I mean, that's your no, opinion. No, no, always, no, no. This, right? this is what I would say. Or not, not, not what they say. You can't trust how it's being. For example, if something happens on stage production-wise and it goes, that seemed kind of fishy. That seemed kind of weird. The benefit of the doubt's almost gone now, right? It, it's almost a point now where something production-wise is weird against Andrew Yang or Amy Klobuchar, for example, or for Biden or Warren. It's going to stand out as like, hold on a minute here. Like, it, if it happens once, whatever. Like the the mic issue with Andrew Yang on night one could be a million things, right? But now it's. Or would you agree? It's gotten to the point where if C, if something happens with the CNN production that doesn't feel on the up, it's almost like well, it probably isn't, because we have people behind the scenes kind of saying like, man, it probably isn't. Well, even Kyle Kalinske is complaining about the propaganda for Kamala Harris. Now we know it's because he's a Bernie guy. Fine, whatever. That's your guy. Uh, fine, have that be your guy. But this is this is what I would say. I wouldn't say I'm going full blown conspiracy theorist, where I don't think there's human incompetence involved. Like if 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 the lights were to go out when Amy Klobuchar is speaking, I'm not going to be convinced that it's because they hate Amy Klobuchar. But there's Klobuchar. more evidence now, right? Okay. It's certain amount that yeah, perhaps. there's more evidence. But look, this, this is where I am with CNN, and I'm where George Bush Jr. was in the last two or three years of his presidency. He said, "I refuse to do anything but live interviews." with these media corporations because they always hack up and edit and misrepresent and change the white balance and and do such horrible political games with anything that's not live where at least I have a fair shot. So yeah, I'll watch the CNN debate, okay? I'll watch it, but I'm not going to trust any of the commercials. I'm not going to trust any of the... Uh, um, the, the the bio documentaries that they make about the candidates because I know they're just going to be lambasting well, the ones they thing, don't like. Moderators, the moderation, right? Oh, I'm not going to trust the moderators. I'm not going to trust the questions. And that's also what a lot of other people are thinking and why we have a much more personality-driven dri political field now. Okay? So much more of voting is personality-driven ever than before because really that's kind of all you can trust. Government has gotten so complex that if they start going policy wonk, half the people glaze over, tune out, and don't feel like they can actually keep up with what's going on. And they just kind of look for temperament. And, and that's really what reality TV is. So Andrew Yang was right when he says this is just reality TV. Pete Buttigieg was right when he says this is why uh, debates are unwatchable now. Why? Because we the people permitted the corruption of CNN, MSNBC, MS, uh, NBC, and CBS for so long and so hard, not having realized the business had become a racket. Anyway, I'm out of breath, Cody, and I'm tired. <laughs> um, let us know. If, if you think we're wrong, if CNN's an honest broker, tell us. Hey, show us some evidence. We are always open to new data. Uh, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, please make sure you check out the PayPal link in the description. Also, you can pick up a hat at problemsolverpolitics.com. Join us in the live stream tonight as we talk about the debate. And make sure that you send it, uh, give us a voicemail if you'd like to, uh, 1-833-PSP-RADIO. This is Problem Solver Politics. We'll see you in the next video.